AWS Resource Control Policy, this is such an important feature. The users inside AWS member accounts are able to set those resource-based policies. You can restrict it, especially external principles access to your AWS resources. Now, if you see over here, we have an AWS organizations of accounts and organization units. And what happens is that Mr. Script Keyloy, all right, who is perhaps a little newer to AWS, he may be opening up some of the services to external principles. Say, for example, you have your S3 bucket policies, and it may have granted access to Mr. Hacker Loy, who does not belong to the AWS organizations. And what happened then is your best friend forever, Mr. Hacker Loy, now has access to this S3 bucket and all of the objects and content within it. And this is a security risk or finding. And what we want to do now with resource control policies is to say that even at the top, we have our AWS organizations, all right, we have our resource control policy, and we say we attach it to a specific account or organization unit that says, if you are outside of the AWS organizations of our member accounts, you do not have access. You are blocked from accessing our resources. And even though Mr. Script Kitty Loy may be able to have full administrator access to set all of these different resource-based policies that may be accessible by Mr. Hacker Loy, however, because of the resource control policy, it restricts the access and it is inherited all right, either as specific organization units, as AWS accounts that are under a specific OU. As long as the policy is attached to the target workloads, we'll be able to prevent the external principles, in this case, could be Mr. Hackalloy, from accessing our resources. Now, before we go any further, the most important part is to put on your AWS thinking cap so that you're now an expert cloud engineer. Now, there may be something that is a little more familiar with you called the service control policies. So I'm going to demonstrate to you what that is first with a little bit of history of why this matter. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm logging to my management account, the big boss, the ultimate boss account. I'll go ahead and click on the top right corner and I'll click onto organization. Okay, so I've already logged in into my AWS account. This is the management account, the big boss, all right? Boss Hacker Alloy. So if you see right here on the left, you have something called policy. So let's go ahead and click on the policies. And from policies, you can see the following here core service control policies. And of course, the new one in this case is resource control policies. If you are accessing resource control policies for the first time, you need to enable it. And it takes a couple of minutes. So go ahead and enable it. I have already done so, so you can see the green thick mark right here. So I'll go ahead and click on the service control policy. I want to explain to you the importance of this first before I go over the resource control policy because you have a better reference point. You're more familiar with service control policy and this help us get an understanding of why. So the first thing you see here is something called full AWS access. So I'll go ahead and click on it and you can see the following. This policy is managed by AWS and so on and so forth. I can scroll all the way down and you see something here. This allows all actions on all resources, all right, with the effect of allow. So this is attached to the following targets, all right, so in this case, we have all these different targets, so pretty much all of these AWS accounts have this policy in them, okay? So meaning that, all right, we have not yet added in any form of deny permissions. We have not yet tried to block any users within the member accounts from doing certain things, okay? However, there's a couple of things I wanna show you here that is very important. I'm going over into this service called AWS Control Tower, which is a great service because what it does, it, it allow you to get to what we call this automated governance stage, all right, or state. And what I'm gonna show you now is something called controls. And in controls, what I have here is I can filter, all right, based on behavior, and I'll put equals as preventive, okay? And if I scroll down further, there are many different types of controls. Okay, so I have, of course, service control policy. And what I wanna find here is something that is mandatory. 
Okay, so we have the guidance equals mandatory. All right, and then with that, I'll go ahead and click on to one of them. Say for example, this allow changes to Amazon CloudWatch locks lock group set by AWS control tower. Okay, and there is a sample artifact that we can take a look at. I'll scroll all the way down. I'll click on our artifacts. And you can see right here the service control policy. You can click onto it. This is something that is attached, all right, to govern or enroll AWS account. So meaning they're under control. And you can see here we have an effect of deny. And we have the following couple of locks. So if someone tried to delete the CloudWatch locks lock group, they will fail because of a preventive control attached to AWS organizations. And this is important because even if I log in as a member account, and if I have full administrative access, I still get denied. So this is governed at the top, all right, at the big boss account, okay? So that's what we call service control policy. Now, if I close this, all right, and this is placed across all of those enrolled accounts. So what I do now is if I head over into the task account and I click onto AWS Administrator Access, okay, and I go in and click onto it, I'm now logging into this account. And if I head over into say CloudWatch and I try to delete what was created, all right, by Control Tower that we saw earlier as an artifact in Service Control Policy. So if I try to delete it, look, I am logging in as Administrator Access. I have star all star, meaning I have all permissions into the AWS account. Now you can see here, there is a AWS dash control tower notification forwarder. I'll click onto it. I'll click onto actions. I'll click delete all groups. I click delete again. You see here, there's a red pop up. Okay. The following log groups could not be deleted. All right, so we can see right here towards the end with an explicit deny in a service control policy. And the reason why resource control policy is huge is because of one very important statement about service control policy. This is the important paragraph. If you read carefully here, it states the following. Service control policy don't affect resource-based policies directly. And that's very important. Because if we go back over into the architecture that I'll show you in a second, the bucket policy grants access to users from account B outside the organization. And the account A has a service control policy, but it does not apply, all right, to users outside of the account, outside of the organizations. All right, so let me show you in terms of architecture how that looks like. So you can see right here, the service control policy is not effective on resource-based policies because the resource over here grants an external principle. All right, so in this case, you have the external principle, which is Mr. Hacker Loy. Then Mr. Hacker Loy, of course, has access into this S3 bucket as an external AWS account. It is not internal. So this is AWS account B. And what we have here is AWS account A. And of course, they belong to two different organization, okay? So in that case, the service control policy that has been placed here, right, has no effect on whether Mr. Hacker Loy can access this S3 bucket or not. Now over here, what I have is an S3 bucket called Tested Bucket by Mr. Hacker Loy. And what's really important is under permissions. So if I hit over to permissions and I scroll down further, there's something called the bucket policy. And this is very important because what we have here is a specific principle, all right, that is outside of the AWS account. So you can see right here we have principle from this account, from this user, and they're able to put object, get object, against this specific S3 bucket, all right? So they have permissions and they are outside of the AWS organizations. So what I'm gonna do now is to go ahead and place an object into the S3 bucket. So I have here my command line interface, cloud shell. And of course, what I can do now is go ahead and enter LS 
and I can do a cat test. So I have a specific object or file here that can then upload over into the target S3 bucket. So what I can do now is go to enter the following AWS, followed by S3 API, put object, dash dash bucket, and then of course test it, bucket by Mr. Hacker Loy, and then followed by the following of key test, followed by the dash dash of body, and then dot slash test, hit enter on that. And now we have placed in the object, so I can go ahead and close off my cloud shell. I do a refresh, and we can see right here, we have a object that is ready to be downloaded by the external account. All right, so right now I'm logged into the bad guy account. Well, I mean, I'm not really a bad guy. It just so happened that Mr. Hacker Lloyd do sound kind of like a sketchy person. But anyways, I'm here in the account now and I am logged in. And I, of course, here have Cloud Shell running, which is a command line interface. And I'll be entering the following to get object. So what I can do now is, let me just go in and zoom in a little more for this so it's easier for you to see what's going on. Let's see where I can zoom a little more. Okay, perfect. So what I'll do now is do an AWS S3 API get object followed by the bucket name. So in this case, we have the bucket name of tested bucket by Mr. Hacker Loy dash dash key test followed by dot slash test. Let's hit enter on that and let's see what we get. Okay, perfect. We managed to download the object. So I can enter LS, I can do a cat, pass, and again, we're now able to get the file. So we're in. We manage to download the file from the account. And of course, it's like, this is free play. Now what I'm gonna do is head back over into the management account, which is the big boss account, and we'll now place in a preventive control. And I'm gonna do that through. AWS Control Tower, one of my favorite services of all time because of automated governance, multi-account management. I'll hit over the controls, and right here, I'll search for a control that is specific of the behavior preventive, and at the same time, if you can see here, implementation, I'm going to search on filter for the implementation is equal to the following of resource control policy. So now if I scroll down further, I can see the following of, in this case, I already know what I want. Okay, so we have the following that states that require that the organizations, Amazon S3 resources are accessible only by IAM principles that belong to the organization or by an AWS service, perfect. So meaning that an external account tries to access our S3 bucket will be denied. So I hit over to control actions, I click enable, and you can see right here I'm targeting the sandbox organization unit because this is where my account resides. Okay, so click next on that. Any exempted principles you want to add in right here, so the answer for me is no. Scroll all the way down, click next, scroll all the way down, and click enable control. So give it a while, it's now creating the service control policy, attaching it to the organization unit. And once that is done, okay, we'll reveal it in AWS organizations. Okay, now done, perfect. Control successfully enable. Okay, now if I hit the top right corner, I click onto organization, and I click onto policies on the left. I click onto that, and right here we have resource control policies. I clicked onto it. As usual, similar to service control policy, if you click onto it, RCP full AWS success, it's right here, okay? It's the following of effect, principal action resource. Now, if I head back over to resource control policies, I click onto the one that's deployed by AWS control tower. I scroll all the way down, you can see the following here. Okay, this is important. Okay, listen carefully for this one. We will deny all principles, okay, all principles for S3 for all resources if they do not belong to this principal organization ID or if they are not an AWS principal service, okay? So with that, what we're gonna do now is if you scroll all the way up, all right, you can see right here, this has been deployed, it's been attached. So if I click on the targets, you can see right here, it's been attached to sandbox organization unit. Now I head back over to the bad guy account, Mr. Hackaloy. 
And what I do now is I run the same command, which is AWS S3 API get object, da da da. I hit enter on this. You see the following right here? Access deny. You're blocked. Okay, so that's how beautiful resource control policy is. And you can run this at scale. You can use this to have better protection against external accesses in your AWS environment. So go ahead, try it out. Let me know how it goes.